you play in pairs, uh, north and east, south and west, on uh, a square table. Um, and it's, uh, someone comes out with a card, uh, which is either, uh, either uh, spades, or hearts, or uh, diamonds, or clubs. And everyone has, if they are able, come up with a good card of the same suit, which we call following suit. Isn't that like that? Um, this is uh, a feature of many classic uh, uh, trick taking games like uh, Arts, Clavios, Skat, or uh, Riggen, which uh, some of you from the south of our country may be. Maybe, you know, any Rebensians in here who know how to pick? Yay, there's one. <laughs> or, yes, the only one who is actually admitting to being one. Um, a feature that lots of trick-taking games share is Trump, and it's not the man that I'm displaying here. It's a kind of suit which is higher than all other suits. If someone plays a color and you don't have any more of those, uh, if someone plays a suit and you don't have any more of those, you can play a Trump, and the trick is yours, unless someone else plays a higher Trump. Yeah. No Kumovers here. Usually, uh, trick-taking games have a high luck factor. Uh, if you have good cards, you can play a good game, but if you have bad cards, well, you can just follow suit and, well, make, basically, wait out the game. Not so with bridge. Contract bridge, as we call it, is a classic trick-taking game. Um, the uh, order of the cards is very easy. Lots of trick-taking games are so confusing, like Clavios. You have the classic, uh, the aces on top, but then comes the ten. And below that is the king, uh, except for that's Trump, because then the jack is highest, then the nine, then the, the ace. We, at Bridge, we're like, we want our things logical, we're nerds, and we want it scientific. Ace is highest, then the king, two is lowest. That means spelled up. Thanks, great. Um, there's no jokers in a, uh, in a Bridge game. We use all, uh, all 52 cards, which means that everyone gets 30 cards. The luck factor is diminished greatly in bridge because um, even with bad cards you can have some influence on the game. And if you have very good cards it is often very wise to bid very high, to get yourself into a very high contract to challenge yourself. If you own all the aces in the game, then you have to live up to that. We'll see how soon. There's four phases of play in bridge. Everyone gets dealt the cards. 13 to a person, I guess. Um, there's an auction um, in which uh, people exchange bits for a contract, as we call it. I'll explain that uh, more about it in, uh, in a few seconds. Then we actually play, and then we score. And you'd say, well, the play should be the longest part of the game. It's a game, right? We should play. But sometimes scoring is uh, P-I-T-A, as I can tell you. Scoring for contract bridge is very complicated, but that's one of the things that makes it Rather interesting. Each player gets 30 cards. Logical. In a dealing place. Then we start auctioning. Start the auction. We use the auction to determine which team, either north or south, north and south, or east and west, actually play the contract. Um, there's two factor, factors to a, to a contract. The level and the strain. If you uh, wanted to, to, to play a game of bridge, you wanted to actually play it, be the clever, uh, try and make a contract, you have to make uh, a bit of at least seven tricks. The first six tricks are really unimportant to, uh, to us. If you play, you play for se uh, seven tricks or more. So, if we base, say, uh, seven tricks for, uh, with uh, clubs as, uh, as trump, we say, that's a bit of one clubs. We don't count those six first. Not important. The strain is the color, uh, the, uh, the suit of, uh, of trump, uh, either club, diamond, heart, or spades, or there's a fifth strain in which which says no trump. We can choose, depending on our hands, not to use any trump at all, which is harder to play, actually, but I guess bonus to it. The dealer starts with bidding, maybe make the first bid, uh, but you do not have to uh, actually uh, Give a bid, you can also pass. Or double, or even redouble some contracts to up the stakes, to make it even more exciting than it already is. Are you excited yet? 
Um, there is a suit order in Bridge. Uh, as opposed to uh, many other trick-taking games, uh, we have uh, created a, uh, in, an order in the suits uh, just to determine for the auction which bid is higher than another. If I bid uh, set, uh, for seven tricks with diamond as trump, that is a higher bid than uh, a bid for seven tricks with clubs as trump. Because we said clubs is lowest, then comes diamonds, then comes hearts, then comes states, then comes another trump. So, two clubs is a higher bid than one clubs. Two clubs says, if clubs is, uh, is trump, we can make eight tricks, we, me and my partner. Uh, and one hearts is a higher bid than one diamond. The fun thing is, um, most players, actually all players, make some agreements about this, uh, this auction, this, uh, these bids. Every bid has its own meaning. You can take a conventional system, or you can devise your own, but all your agreements must be public. If an opponent doesn't know what your bid actually means, what, it's, uh, what you try to tell about your hand, they can ask. So all information about your system is public, which gets interesting later in the game. So I'm only promising you things, let's get into the things we stuff. The auction ends after three consecutive passes. If no one wants to top the last bid, uh, the final bid stands, and that's going to be contract. There is an exception if the first player passes, for his, uh, if the dealer passes, and then three players pass, well, the fourth player hasn't had a turn yet. Maybe he owns all uh, the, the good cards in, in the game. So that's an, uh, an exception for the first round. The last bid stands and becomes a contract, the actual contract that you have to play. The confusing thing is, now who is going to play it? Well, at least it's a team who bid the, uh, uh, the, the last bid, or did the last bid, but it's the member of uh, that team who first declared the suit in which the contract is going to be played, who is going to be leader. The other is going to be dummy. It's going to be stupid and, and as they say in French, uh, le mort, dead. Once uh, the first lead has been played, the dummy puts down all his cards on the table, which makes bridge more of a puzzle game than an actual luck-based uh, trick-taking game, because you see, everyone sees at least 26 cards. In that order, first, the initial lead has to be, has to be played, so the first player is in the dark, but then everyone sees those 26 cards and can make plans for how to actually uh, get to the, uh, the amount of tricks needed. If, say, someone plays a three non turn contract, there is no trump, and a declarer has to make nine tricks, he can look at all his 26 cards of his team and determine how to uh, get to those nine tricks. I've got an example of that. But later, sorry. Um, Sometimes, uh, well, most of the time actually, uh, in, uh, to, to keep it with, with, with the same example, if you play uh, three no trumps, you have to make nine, tri nine tricks. Uh, it's very uh, improbable that you'll have four aces and some cards directly below that to actually collect nine, nine tricks from top. <coughs> you'll have to develop them. Say if you own ace and queen and five little ones in a color, if the, uh, if the king is out, uh, has, been, has been played, your queen can become a trick. That's what we call developing suits, developing tactics, uh, so, uh, developing tricks, sorry. Another one is roughing cards, actually uh, using a trunk of your own to, uh, to take over your, uh, uh, your trick. Because there is something I did not tell you, uh, dummy is open on the table and he's actually dead because the declarer tells dummy what to play. Dummy cannot decide anymore. So that actually means uh, Bridge is a good game for lazy people. Because one, third, one fourth of your game is your dummy and you don't have to do anything. At my club, this one, uh, we actually have a, a convention which uh, says uh, dummy fetches beer. Another thing to uh, keep in mind is that uh, if dummy wins a trick, it's still dummy. Come up with the next lead. 
Um, that means that if you are to be clever and you want to uh, collect some uh, tricks that you have collected, say, that if you have uh, developed, say, in dummy, you need to be able to get there. Dummy needs to be able to gain a trick to actually be able to play the next thing. I'll put things in examples to get. More clear. Oh. Uh, well, I guess you can read the top parts, I hope. The contract is three notes three note from by South, which means that South will have to uh, make nine tricks and there is no trump. Any clear. Um, our left hand opponent, which we call LHO in, uh, in bridge, uh, plays the first lead with two of clubs. Um, this is unnecessary, in some uh, trick-taking games you have to come up with uh, two of clubs as a uh, first card, but the first lead can be any card you desire. Um, about left-hand opponents and right-hand opponents, some people at my club, me include, play with a middle-hand opponent, but some call them a partner. Two of clubs. Um, and the contract is three, not shrimp by south, but the fun thing is, if you look at these cards, you could realistically take three tricks from the top. You could take the Ace of Clubs, the King of Clubs, and the Ace of, Ace of Spades. And you do not know whether you will be able to collect the rest of the tricks. So you need to develop six full tricks. We're going to play this game. We're going to think about how can we develop some tricks. Well, as we can see, there's lots of diamonds with us. We have a total of eight diamonds. Yes, eight, di eight diamonds. And we have the king, the queen, and the jack. If the ace drops out of the game, if one of the opponents drops, uh, uh, actually plays their ace, we have, well, at least the king, uh, uh, the queen and the, and the jack. Say that the king, the king is used to get away the ace, then we at least have the, uh, the queen and the jack. And provided that the, uh, the, the diamond split profitably, like all those five are not at one side, which is highly improbable, as some statisticians may tell you, then we can collect a, a full four diamond tricks, as, to, as opposed to none right now. This question, is one of the questions. Yes. Why would you lose the king for the ace? Why could you just couldn't you just put all the ace by the jack or the five or something? Well, um, that is possible, but then still uh, we could lose the five to the ace, uh, which would make, mean sloppy play from the opponents. Because as we can see, they have we have the two, the three, the four, the five, and if we play the five, it's almost guaranteed that uh, our right-hand opponent has a 7 or okay. an 8. But then, then say the jack instead of um, the king. Yes, then you only make the king and the queen. Be patient because we're going to play this game and this is going to come up. Another very interesting thing to see is that uh, we lack the king of spades. Um, we do have the 10, or there is a T over there, we usually don't use zero, uh, one zero, but T, and there is a 9. We own all high spades except for the king. There is a scenario which has a 50% uh, chance that if the king is on our right, we can make 4 spades tricks. I'll show you why. This is our first, first trick. Um, we have to follow suit, so we play a little club and dummy. We say to dummy, please play a little club, and dummy puts a small club for us. Our right hand opponent plays the jack, um, and we could take with uh, the uh, ace of clubs, but this isn't wise. Maybe I can explain later why it isn't. But let's just say, for now, we play five clubs. It means the opponents have one trick, and we still have zero. Our right hand opponent comes back with a 10. Now we take with the ace. And we try those diamonds. Let's get the, the ace out and see whether we can, uh, we can develop those tricks. We play the 2. Left drops the 9. We play the jack, and there comes the 7. No ace yet. Now that we're there, we'll want to try to do that club trick, club trick because we have no good way to get into the dummy. Uh, we need to get into the dummy to do the club trick. 
and well, those kings aren't very reliable for getting into the dungeon. So we play the ten of spades, which holds. Not a trick for us. Well, we continue on with the nine of spades, and then the king drops, and now we can take the king with our ace, and the rest of the club of this space are free, so we can select those in the next two tricks. Nice. We play our heart to the king because we have the king, the jack, and the queen. If the ace drops out, we're set. No ace yet. Then we play the king, and there comes the ace. Fun thing is, our left hand opponent doesn't play any diamonds anymore, which means on the first diamond trick, she did follow suit, but she had only one. That means that the Remaining four diamonds are on our right, so we could play the king, uh, we could play the queen, but our five or four will not be a trick because there will be a seven or uh, uh, an eight left over there. Um, we continue. Uh, our uh, right opponent comes with uh, the eight of hearts, which we take with the king. Oh, this is wrong. I'm sorry. Our right opponent comes with the, the, the ten of hearts. I'm totally flubbing, flubbing this. Our right hand opponent wins with the ace of diamonds, comes back with the six of hearts, which our left hand opponent takes with the ace. And she comes back with the seven of clubs for our king. And then the game is essentially over, because we're uh, on lead, and the queen of hearts and the queen of diamonds are the highest in their suits. We've got ten tricks, and we need it only nine. Um, I could explain you something about the scoring, but um, I'm a bit out of my time, so I'll tell you that it's very complicated. But this complicated, complicatedness makes it very interesting, because uh, you gain a lot of points for making a certain contract, but you uh, lose very little points for uh, uh, going down, for not making a contract. So if your opponents are about to make a contract which gives them, gives them say, 500 points, if you bid a little bit higher, and you only go down one. Um, they could have got, uh, got, uh, got 500 points, but you only lose 50, which is good. Which makes game balance interesting. Yeah, scoring. You get bonuses for certain games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's skip this. <laughs> and we can double and redouble, uh, but we want to go for game. Game is not this, this kind of game, but game is a certain uh, game at a certain level. For which uh, we make uh, appointments for our bidding how to reach game as quickly as possible. If you're interested, I can tell you more about it. Uh, about how to evaluate your hand, evaluate a hand like this, uh, how bidding agreements work, um, uh, what the general agreements are. But uh, I don't want to bore you any further if you're really not interested in playing games and uh, rather just dance and things. Yeah, okay. Um, let's say I was getting enthusiastic. And, uh, one thing is, um, in Duplicate Bridge, we play lots of games, everybody plays the same games, and you compare your results later uh, in the evening. Everyone plays the same game, same situation, better result maybe. If you're interested in, uh, uh, in Bridge and might want to follow a beginner's course, you can uh, go to either uh, USL, USL here in, uh, in Amsterdam. They uh, start a beginner's course uh, next month, it is? No, I believe. 6th of March. 6th of March. And uh, if you're living in Utrecht or anywhere nearby, go to Dombo and we'll welcome you as well. Thank you. Vincent, thank you very much. The first thing that I would like to ask you is what happens at a bridge club? What kind of crowd is attending a bridge club? Well, uh, you mean the, the, the relaxed bridge, bridge clubs, not the granny ones? Yeah, <laughs> well, like Dumbo. We, uh, we laugh, we play, and we drink a lot of beer. It's a bit like here, right? Yeah. But with card tables and. With card tables and, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that, yeah, that uh, sounds like fun, actually. <laughs> Any questions from the audience? Um, I've heard some stories about the Seven of Diamonds. Could you tell me more about it? 
Um, for most clubs, uh, that's not the suit, but uh, the British clubs, if you uh, win the last trick with the seven of diamonds, um, then you have to pay a round to the end of the table. I like a round of beer. But um, at Dumbo, we are a bit, well, alternative. Our beer card is the, ace of, uh, sorry, the, the eight of spades, and if you finish the seven of diamonds, then you have to pay uh, a round for the entire club. <laughs> there was a question over here, I think. I don't know. Somebody raise your hand. No? Yeah, right at the back, gentlemen. So I have a question for you. I won't embarrass you too much, but my dad plays bridge. Yes. And one of the things he said about bridge is that the bidding part is really important. It is. It's actually sharing information about your hand with both your partner and your opponents. Yes. So if you take out the bidding part of bridge, mm -hmm. is it a game that's completely determined, like uh, yeah, and Ayan and the English tic tac toe? Yeah. It's, it's still interesting. Actually, when you start playing bridge, you start playing bridge without bidding, called mini bridge. <laughs> and then is it a game like easier, or is it like if you know how to play it, you will always win? Or if you know how to play it, and everyone knows how to play it, you always start? Uh, you will not always win if you know how to play it. There's uh, lots of different situations and it's, it's rather still a hard game. Uh, it's just that because the bidding can get so complicated, um, it's not recommended for beginners. So, I have a question which kind of tunes into this. Um, I have the expression, I come from a, a very bourgeois environment where we have more <laughs> card games down to earth card games like Claviasse and Boulogne. So, um, I have a feeling that Richards tend to look down on us a bit. Is that, is that true? Would you be ready to admit this? Or? In private? <laughs> well, uh, private here, the public eye. Uh, lots of bridge players have played other trick taking games and are really enamored with bridge, so yeah, maybe we do look down on most of them. That's very brave of you. <laughs> Vincent, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Please, uh, if you also join us to the stage.